thank you very much. <coughs> so, uh, it is my great uh, pleasure and honor to have a chance to speak in this uh, very, very uh, exciting uh, a workshop or a, a special program on, on summer school. And uh, I would like to thank the organizers, uh, uh, Professor Frank Mel, Yvonne Maltel, and other organizers for the, for the invitation. And uh, probably I am one of the very few speakers who will talk on parabolic equation in this uh, workshop. However, uh, uh, the result I obtained, this is, a jo this is joint work with Frank Mel, has a, a much reminiscent, uh, it's a, uh, quite reminiscent to what uh, uh, Frank Mel and other people, uh, Koenig and other people are working on nonlinear wave equation and the results uh, have a, a much similarity despite the difference of the type of equations. And uh, uh, the structure, critical structure, uh, uh, the two equations share the critical structure despite the difference, uh, a lot of difference uh, uh, in the nature, other nature, but uh, this critical structure is, is so strong that uh, very similar uh, results are obtained for this type of equation. So this, uh, this is why I wanted to report this result in this uh, workshop, uh, uh, this summer school, I mean. <coughs> so the goal is uh, to establish a multi-scale resolution of radial solutions. So I'm just uh, uh, talking about the radially symmetric solutions of the critical heat equation uh, into rescaled ground states, which we may call solitons. In the same spirit of the paper, uh, I'm sorry, I cannot uh, pronounce this name well, although I have met him before, but uh, Duikaet, uh, Koenig and Mel of 2013. There are further development in this theory. Uh, uh, they, they worked uh, also on a non radial case, but uh, uh, my uh, uh, talk today uh, is very, very similar in some sense in its spirit to this, uh, to their work. Uh, so there, uh, there is a striking similarity between the two results. So, uh, as I said, this is joint work with with Frank Mel, and uh, it, I can uh, call it a parabolic analog of their result, DKW 2013. Uh, so, outline of the talk is the following. I will uh, make an introduction first, just to uh, give a brief review of what is known about uh, nonlinear heat equations, uh, rather than wave equations or Schrodinger equations. Uh, uh, Although there are uh, many people in the audience who are familiar with this kind of things, but just in case, uh, let me make uh, a quick review. And then I will talk about uh, the main results. And then I will um, uh, briefly uh, uh, explain the idea of the proof. But the idea of the proof, I will uh, uh, use the blackboard. So, uh, let me start with this nonlinear heat equation. Uh, this is the uh, uh, power nonlinearity. U ut equals Laplacian U plus U to the power P equals zero. And uh, the solution, you can change sign. And uh, we, I consider a Cauchy program on Rn. And initial data U0 uh, belongs to the energy space. Anyway, the first assumption is that P is the sublef critical exponent, P equals PS, which is uh, this uh, quantity, and the dimension N is larger than or equal to 3. And I only concentrate on radially symmetric solutions. 
Uh, still, the analysis of non-riders' non uh, solutions is quite difficult. Uh, but the result uh, we, uh, I present here would uh, give some hint for uh, uh, further properties of uh, possibly non-rider non solutions. And then uh, I will uh, uh, assume that uh, the initial data is uh, H1 dot of Rn, so the gradient of U is in L2. But I don't need uh, necessarily, sometimes I may have to make some technical assumptions uh, such as U, 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 U not being in L2, but in most cases I, I would like to avoid it. And then, uh, okay, this is the, as usual, the norm of H1 dot. And then uh, uh, it is known by uh, the usual parabolic estimates that if you are given initial data in H1 dot, they immediately uh, the solution becomes uh, 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 classical in some sense. It belongs to, uh, it's bounded and uh, it belongs to this space. And also it is known that uh, uh, it is uh, known that if t is, t is the maximum time of existence, if t is uh, finite, then it, it means that the uh, elevity norm uh, goes to infinity and, and uh, so does h2 dot norm but not necessarily H1 dot norm. There are cases where the solution uh, blows up, but H1 dot norm may stay bounded. Uh, so hereafter we assume that U naught is bounded. And there is uh, no loss of generality because if, if uh, the solution will always become bounded immediately. Then, uh, I call this a uh, finite time blow up. And it is well known, okay, uh, for people here uh, in the audience, most of the people are more experts than uh, myself uh, about this kind of scale invariance. But just in case, let me just make a brief uh, overview of what uh, of the properties of this critical nonlinear heat equation. So if uh, U is a solution uh, of uh, this equation, then U lambda of xt, which is defined by uh, this function, it's just a rescaling of U, is again a solution. This is just a simple computation and it doesn't uh, depend on the choice of P. Uh, for any P this is true. And, uh, and if V is a solution uh, depending on, uh, only on X, then V lambda, which is defined by this, also a, a solution of, uh, of this stationary problem. And for the uh, case where P is equal to the Sobolev uh, critical exponent, uh, if G lambda I denote by G lambda this uh, rescaling of G and then, okay, this uh, 2 over P minus 1 is equal to N minus 2 over 2 and then uh, the uh, uh, H1 norm and the L2 star norm is uh, preserved where 2 star is defined by this and this is a typical feature of a critical nonlinearity and this uh, identity uh, uh, in some sense defines the nature of the, this problem and uh, uh, the critical case is uh, distinctly different from the subcritical and the supercritical problem as many people in this audience uh, be, uh, well know, uh, know very, very well. Uh, then the energy of this problem, this equation is defined by this for the, for the critical case. 
and because of this in, uh, invariance, the energy remains uh, invariant under this transformation. And it is also well known that the derivative, uh, uh, time derivative of the energy is uh, this, and therefore it is uh, non-negative. Uh, so it is a Lyapunov function. So in particular, if the energy is known to be bounded from below, you can show that the solution uh, approaches a set of equilibria, a set of steady states. Now, uh, what is known about the stationary solutions for this problem? Again, uh, the, most of the people in the audience are real experts uh, of this problem, but, uh, but just in case, uh, uh, let me make a brief, quick review. Uh, so, for the critical case, th all the solution of this problem is written, or the radial solution of this problem is written in this form, and uh, where Q is given in, uh, by this function explicitly. So this uh, equation, this uh, elliptic equation, has a so uh, solution on the entire space for P uh, critical or supercritical, but for the critical case, uh, it is explicit. And there is also a singular stationary solution, which is given uh, by this, for P larger than certain subcritical value. There is such a solution. And this, is, this plays a very important role for the analysis of blow-up, for example, but not only for blow-up, for the analysis of the soliton resolution uh, the, uh, this singular station solution uh, plays an important role. And this singular station solution uh, decays with this rate, precisely, it's just a power of R. While Q of X, since we have R squared here, it decays faster. Again, this is a, a typical feature of the critical case. Uh, the uh, station solution for this problem for supercritical P decays with the same uh, order as the singular st uh, station solution. It is exactly this order. Only for P equals uh, PS, it decays faster. And uh, also another important thing is that uh, 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 this is what I said. Another important thing is that the intersection number, okay, z here, uh, denotes the zero number. So it, it uh, uh, gives the intersection between the two graphs. So uh, for any lambda, the intersection of the graph of Q lambda and phi star, which is the singular station solution, is always two. Uh, to check it, all you need to do is to check it for lambda equals 1, because all others are the same, because phi star is invariant under this trans, uh, uh, transformation, this rescaling. So one, uh, if you check it for lambda equals 1, uh, it, it is clear. But this uh, uh, property can also be understood uh, by converting this problem into ODE, and by, by changing uh, uh, the variable, uh, which I may uh, mention later, uh, uh, why this is two, uh, it is very, very clear from the phase plane analysis. And also, it is very, very important that the two, uh, for any two values of lambda and mu, for different values of lambda and mu, the two stationary solutions intersect only once in the, uh, as a function of R. So this part and this part is symmetric, so we, let's just consider R positive. And then the intersection number equals 1. This is again very important uh, in our analysis. And then, uh, 
I have also, uh, I have to uh, uh, make a brief review of what is known about the blow up of solutions for this nonlinear heat equation. And it is already uh, explained, for example, in the le uh, uh, lecture of uh, Professor Koenig, Koenig and but, but also uh, uh, other people. Uh, type 1 blow up is such th that the solution blows up at time capital T, where T is a finite number, but this re uh, uh, is bounded. This quantity remains bounded. And type 2 blow up is such that this quantity is unbounded. And it turns out that if it is uh, bounded, th then you can show that uh, uh, the solution, uh, this quantity blows up with the same rate as this one. So it converges more or less to some constant. And the sharp estimate for, of this for the subcritical case, for example, was uh, proved by Mel and Zag, for example. And, uh, uh, but there are uh, many other results, even for the supercritical case. But uh, type, okay, this is the same blow up rate as the ODE, u dot equals u, u to the power p. And also it is the same blow up rate for the cell similar solution, cell similar blow up solution, if it, uh, such a thing exists. But for the type 2 blow up, to determine the blow up rate is much harder. It is uh, uh, rather complicated. Uh, and it requires a, 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 a ve uh, much involved an uh, analysis in general. And for the uh, critical case, type 1 implies that H1 dot norm, so the uh, L2 norm of the gradient of U goes to infinity. This you can show. And type 2 blow up almost implies that this remains bounded. Almost. We could not exclude some uh, pathological cases. Uh, there might be some pathological uh, counterexample to this, which we could not completely exclude, but in most cases, uh, type 2 implies this one. So, in some sense, uh, one can call this type 1 blow up fat blow up profile. Uh, it has a fat blow up profile because it goes to infinity, while this profile, local profile, at the singularity is slim because this is finite. So this is another uh, way to uh, characterize type 1 and type 2 blow up. And about the blow up rate, uh, whether uh, type 1 exists or not, or type 2 exists or not, type, uh, type 1 always exists. For example, uh, ODE solution is of course type 1. But uh, w w the question is whether type 2 blow up can exist or not for the uh, nonlinear heat equation. And it was, uh, 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 there, there is an uh, early study by Giga and Kong and later Giga Matsui Sasayama for the entire space, Giga and Kong for the star shaped domain, and also uh, for the positive solution on the entire space. The, and the later, it was uh, uh, they studied the sign changing solution for the entire space in 2004. They uh, proved that uh, uh, in the subcritical case, only type 1 blow up can occur. And uh, this result doesn't depend on the right uh, symmetry assumption. Uh, it, is, it is true for any, any solution without symmetry. And this, in the supercritical case, uh, much less is known, uh, uh, but uh, it is uh, somewhat uh, uh, understood that uh, situation changes. There are some other critical exponent above the Sobolev expo uh, critical exponent. There is a uh, one called the Joseph Lund Lund Lundgren exponent this, which is finite only for n larger than or equal to 11, uh, that 
for at least radial solutions in this lower range of supercritical P, uh, only type 1 blow up occurs, and uh, uh, there are more, more recent uh, war, uh, uh, studies by some other people uh, also on non radial cases. Uh, so this was proved by uh, 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 Frank and me in 2004 for the radial case. While in the, in the upper uh, supercritical range, where p is bigger than Joseph Lundgren uh, exponent, type 2 blow-up can really occur. And this was first proved by Herrera and Velasquez in their unpublished paper, long paper, uh, by using much asymptotic expansion. And uh, Mizoguchi uh, simplified the proof, uh, uh, but uh, basically uh, she followed uh, the argument, but uh, somewhat uh, simplified it. And, and there are also other uh, methods uh, different from much asymptotic expansion, but these are the early work on the existence of type 2 blow up in this range. Now for the critical case. Critical case remained a little subtler. Uh, if U is positive, it is not difficult to show that only type 1 blow up can occur. And uh, for radial uh, case, it is true. But even for the non-radial case, uh, one can show that uh, for positive solutions, critical Critical nonlinearity is not a big problem for positive non uh, uh, solutions. It is uh, just an easy extension of the subcritical case in some sense, if you assume that U is positive. Difficulty appears on, uh, uh, only when U changes sign. Then uh, the problem becomes much, much more difficult. So for positive solutions, only type 1 uh, uh, blow up occurs. but Type 2 blow-up can occur for sign-changing solutions. Uh, this was proved rigorously by Schweier in 2012 for uh, n equals 4. And I heard that, uh, uh, OK, for in herrero Velasquez's result, the reason it, uh, it was uh, never published is that uh, uh, paper was more than 100 pages long, and the uh, journal uh, uh, refu uh, not refused, but uh, asked them to, to uh, write a book on that, and they refused it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, very recently, I heard also that they had also some formal expansion, asymptotic expansion for the critical case already oh, 20 years ago, but it was 200 pages long. And again, they didn't even uh, ca uh, care uh, uh, even to, to circulate the uh, preprint. But uh, <laughs> Shivaya's uh, result is rigorous. It is probably 70 pages long. However, it relies heavily on earlier work of Raphael or Noel. So if you include all those, it may be 150 pages long or something. Anyway, the critical case is very, very difficult. But uh, uh, he proved it, but for the dimension 4. However, a uh, very recent result, which uh, can be very important, appeared on archive, if the dimension is larger than or equal to 7, and if the initial data is very close to Q, Q is the ground state in H1 sense, then there is no type 2 blow up from such initial data. And this is of extreme importance actually for our work, uh, for my work with Frank. Uh, which I may mention uh, briefly later. So uh, uh, this is a, a really important result. 
And uh, the assumption is such that the uh, initial data is very close to uh, Q. And whether this is true, no type 2 for any initial data, data even far from Q or not, is not completely known. However, our uh, combining our result, uh, analysis, it may be true for more general initial data, as at least for radial, radial case, for dimension uh, larger than or equal to 7. So in that case, if that is the, uh, the case, then the type 2 blow up for sign changing solutions for the critical, uh, critical heat equation can occur only for dimensions uh, uh, 4, 5, or 6. How about uh, 3? 3 also? 3, three OK. Mm. OK. <coughs> And then uh, I have to also uh, make a brief re uh, review of what what is uh, what people st uh, studied for blow up problem using uh, the rescale e uh, equation. So uh, it is a st actual standard self similar rescaling, uh, and then. Uh, this rescaled solution in this new variable satisfies this rescaled equation, and it was uh, uh, used uh, heavily in the paper of Giga and Com uh, in 1985, 87, 89, and they managed to using this uh, uh, analysis, uh, they managed to show that for the subcritical case, uh, the blow up rate is always. Uh, uh, always uh, uh, type 1. And what they showed is uh, uh, that the solution, OK, type 1, the blow up being type 1 is equivalent to saying that W remains bounded as S tends to infinity. By the way, the blow up time, which is small t equals capital T, is converted to S equals infinity. So you have infinitely long time to observe the blow up phenomenon with this rescaling. And therefore, for example, dynamical systems argument can also be used because uh, we have infinitely long time with this uh, change of variable. And uh, type 2 is, by definition, W is unbounded because we are multiplying this. So it is exactly the definition of type 1 and type 2 blow up. So or the question is, for example, what Giga and Kohn showed is that for the subcritical problem, W is always bounded. And therefore, uh, uh, and this has a weighted energy, and therefore it converts to some steady state. And steady states are either just zero or some constant, which is the zero of uh, this function, which I, I will uh, uh, call. Uh, uh, kappa. Is the, uh, so uh, Giga and Kohn shows that the uh, uh, solution always uh, approach either zero or plus minus kappa by using this, uh, the energy which is this. This is a weighted energy, where uh, a rho is this exponential function. And this uh, analysis turned out to be uh, very, very useful also for the, uh, for the supercritical problem, but if also for, for the critical problem to some extent. And uh, one can show that at least for for the radial solution, we have this general pointwise estimate for any solution. Any solution of this satisfies, satisfies this general pointwise estimate, which uh, uh, I proved with Frank in my paper in 2004. Uh, but it was known at least for positive solutions before. But it is true also for sign-changing solution. Any solution satisfies this, and uh, even for supercritical nonlinearity or critical nonlinearity. And uh, uh, combining these two, one can show that uh, W 
So this is a Lyapunov no function, and locally it is bounded in the y, y space, locally, away from the origin. So away from the origin, uh, using this Lyapunov no function energy, uh, one can show that the uh, limit exists, at least for sequences. But uh, for the radial case, one can show that without taking a sequence, the limit re uh, really exists. So this limit function, w star of y, which I, uh, uh, I would call local blow-up profile, uh, characterizes the nature of the blow-up uh, 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 very well, in some sense. And what is known at, uh, 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 local, uh, about the local profile? So the global profile is just a function with, uh, in the original variable u of xt, and as t tends to capital T, uh, the, this limit exists because it's a finite time, and away from the blow-up set, the solution is uh, uh, smooth, and the blow-up point doesn't oscillate, uh, one can show, and therefore uh, outside of the uh, uh, blow-up set, this limit exists. And local profile is what I, I just mentioned in my previous slide. So this is the, uh, this function. This is a, uh, a limit of the solution after this rescaling. And this W star satisfies this equation. And in the subcritical case, uh, W uh, blows up. Uh, okay, w, w star is either plus minus kappa, or W star is equal to zero. And uh, Gigand Kohn showed that uh, if it blows up, it is always either plus kappa or minus kappa. And uh, W star being equal to zero implies that there is no blow up. The solution U is bounded. In the supercritical case, the situation is slightly different because type 2 blow-up can occur. And uh, W star uh, being non-zero and bounded is equivalent to the blow-up being uh, type 1. And, and uh, we proved in, in the paper uh, in 2009 that type 2 blow-up, the blow-up is blow up is type 2 if and only if the W star is the singular steady state, singular station solution. And W star equals 0 implies no blow up. So this part is the same as the subcritical case. But the situation is completely different in the critical case. In the critical case, okay, uh, type uh, W star uh, equal, uh, equals plus minus k, uh, almost implies uh, type 1 blow-up. There might be some uh, pathological cases which we couldn't uh, exclude, but uh, in all cases which uh, we have seen, uh, this implies type 1. The converse is always true. Type 1 blow-up implies W star equals plus minus k, kappa. Then W star equals 0 no longer means no blow-up. W star equals 0 in the critical case means either type 2 blow-up or no blow-up. So this is uh, a big difference between both the sub subcritical and supercritical case. And we are looking at this situation in the critical case. So the main result is the following. Let me, uh, uh, so, so far for, uh, so much for the, uh, uh, okay, I, I think I have to hurry a little bit, and uh, so much for the uh, uh, known results. So this is our result. First, uh, about the classification of general behaviors of the solution. So uh, it is soliton resolution for time global solution. This is uh, theorem one. So assume that the uh, solution is global, time global. And then, okay, we needed uh, some technical assumptions depending on, on the dimension. But uh, uh, let, uh, let's not go into the uh, technical details. Uh, we wanted to just remove all, all these technical assumptions, but uh, unfortunately we had to add some technical assumptions. Then uh, this uh, H1 dot norm remains bounded automatically if it is global. 
and either of the following alternatives hold. Either this, uh, this H1 dot norm goes to zero, so the solution goes to zero in the energy space, or U converges to more or less uh, approach the sum of, the, uh, uh, of such functions. What is th this? Q lambda, by the way, is the rescaled uh, ground state. And they are all radially symmetric, but the rescaling uh, uh, factor is so different between the uh, neighboring, uh, uh, neighboring uh, uh, ground state, uh, gr rescaled ground state, rescaling ratio goes to infinity, which means that this is the, uh, this is one uh, ground, uh, rescaled one, uh, ground state. Another looks like this. They are all solutions of the steady, uh, steady state of the original problem. And uh, another may look like this, very flat. And they all, uh, because this goes to infinity, the interaction goes to zero. So they are totally independent in some sense. So, okay, they don't uh, travel like a uh, soliton KDB equation in a real uh, uh, actual space, but they, they are floating in a parameter space. And moreover, the outermost s soliton, this uh, ratio, lambda m is more or less, uh, more or less it uh, shows the position of the soliton in some sense. It the ratio between this and square root of t goes to zero, which means that it doesn't expand as fast as the self-similar rate. So uh, it, it cannot move so fast, even the outermost one. This is also very, very important. And this follows from our uh, lemma, which we call the semi-localization lemma, which uh, confines the energy uh, the energy, initial data energy is like this, then, then here the, there is almost no energy. And we were able to show that the energy cannot penetrate through this wall, any uh, wall out, away from the origin, by using some uh, combination of some uh, uh, estimate. And using that, we can, we can prove that. So, uh, so uh, lambda j expands slower than the self-similar rate. The next one is the following, theorem to soliton <coughs> resolution for blow-up solutions. And the assumption is that first it is a blow-up solution, and moreover we assume that the local profile is not equal to plus minus kappa. This is the, the only assumption we make for the blow-up solution. And uh, uh, so it almost means that the blow-up uh, uh, it is almost equivalent to saying that the blow-up is ty of type 2. Definitely this means that the blow-up is type 2. Then W star is actually equal to 0. And uh, uh, this is the global profile minus soliton. So U consists of uh, solitons and all this Wm goes to 0 very, very fast because this goes to 0 and it goes faster than this one. So lambda j concentrates faster than the self-similar rate. Oops. Uh, like this. And this never happens in the supercritical case. This is not possible in the supercritical case because of the no needle lemma which we proved in uh, for supercritical problem uh, in 2009. Uh, and in the supercritical case, uh, if the needle becomes thinner and thinner, the energy becomes smaller. And then there is no, no way for the solution to go further. 
But in the critical case, even if it is uh, uh, squeezed, the energy remains the same, and therefore this kind of very thin needle can appear. And this is what it says. And then uh, about the existence of multiple solitons uh, uh, is the following. Uh, it is ongoing work and the claim, our claim is the following. If n is larger than or equal to 7, there exists a time global solution with two solitons. More precisely, there exists a solution u of xt with uh, okay, time global solution such that this minus this goes to zero. For some lambda 1 and lambda 2 satisfying this condition and this condition. And uh, we have more or less uh, uh, proved it, but we are making some final check uh, of uh, all the argument, but uh, basically it, it, it is done, but uh, I, 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 I still call it a claim. Uh, but this, this uh, work, okay, I'd, uh, this work, uh, result heavily uh, relies on the argument which is a modified version of the uh, uh, result of Collot or uh, Koenig Mel. Okay, sorry, sorry, Mel Lafayre, I'm sorry, Mel Lafayre. <laughs> uh, Mel Lafayre, okay, uh, Mel Lafayre. Uh, and uh, so uh, this uh, is a uh, 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 but still go ongoing uh, work. So I wanted to uh, explain the idea uh, on the blackboard, but uh, uh, I seem to have almost used up my time, I, uh, I'm sorry, but. Uh, let me just mention that the proof is based on the combination of a certain energy method and the intersection number argument, zero number principle for 1D parabolic equation. And let me just uh, say just very, very quickly how uh, one can prove uh, one can prove uh, soliton resolution for the time global solution, for example. The argument for the blow-up solution is slightly different, and uh, but similar, and uh, uh, it is a function of R. And uh, there is a uh, we prove the first uh, uh, energy semi-localization. This is done by. Uh, some energy estimate, we, we just put some wall here and uh, just calculate how much energy will penetrate through this wall and if this is uh, quite far away, not much will uh, penetrate, it's very, very small. Which means that uh, 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 energy uh, which moves with the square root of t, this moving uh, wall, uh, so uh, uh, it can be uh, arbitrarily small and uh, therefore, uh, one can show that uh, uh, the energy is confined in a region which is a small order of square root of t. And this is one thing. And then, uh, what we will show is that uh, to use the intersection number argument, and uh, uh, we looked at the intersection of the solution with the uh, singular steady state. And we do the rescaling. We, we normalize it so that it comes to, to the position at the r equals 1, for example. And we do the rescaling limit, take the rescaling limit. In order for the rescaling limit to uh, be possible, we use the fact that eu of dot t is always positive. Therefore, uh, this is uh, finite. And this quantity, after rescaling, remains the same. And therefore, one can show that this is uh, finite. But it doesn't mean that this is bounded. Energy being positive doesn't mean that it is, uh, the solution is bounded h1 dot. It's not automatic. So we need further uh, steps. So all one can do first is that the solution 
any solution satisfies uh, this bound and therefore locally away from the origin one can show that the solution converges to a steady state because of this this energy uh, energy uh, is positive and so because this is bounded but all one can uh, say is that the you co the limit function converges to something which is a solution of this in Rn minus the origin. So it may have singularities. So the next task is to show that it doesn't have a singularity at the origin. How, d how do we do that? In order to do that, we make a we look at all the solutions of this problem outside of the origin. Then it turns out that if you uh, look at this quantity, this quantity, and use uh, z equals uh, log r, the, the equation, if I call it the v, Equation is converted into this simple form. And this is a Hamiltonian system. And if you look at uh, its uh, phase plane, it looks like this. These two solutions correspond to phi star, singular steady state, and minus phi star, because uh, singular steady state, after multiplying this, is a constant. And, this and our Q, ground state, is the homoclinic orbit. And all other solutions intersect with phi star infinitely many times, because it goes around infinitely many times. But one can show that our solution, the limit, cannot intersect with phi star infinitely many times because inf uh, in, uh, intersection number doesn't increase. I think uh, uh, my time is uh, over, but uh, uh, what uh, I wanted to say is that uh, we make uh, several steps based on this kind of intersection number argument, but one can of course, if you are uh, uh, very uh, skillful in energy estimate, you can also uh, prove the boundance of this by using just energy uh, argument. But then the uh, analysis will be much more involved. The combination of this uh, intersection number argument and the energy uh, estimate make the uh, argument much lighter, although it applies only to radial solutions. But at least uh, this kind of argument gives some insight into what's going on, at least for the uh, radial problems. I think I should stop here. And uh, uh, this is a summary, but uh, uh, open question is, are there multiple solutions for in this range, for this dimension? This is not clear. How fast the, does the ratio tend to infinity? And how about the non-radial case? OK, I think I should stop here. And I, I thank you very much for your attention. Um, I'd just like to clarify something in the statement of your theorem, um, especially theorem two. You mentioned this thing called a local profile W star. So, and you say that you know if um, W star is uh, not equals plus minus kappa, then you've got this uh, solid mm -hmm. soliton de decomposition. So I'm just wondering, um, is um, the, I, the, when you say W star not equals that, does that mean that it's not a constant function, or are you evaluating at the origin or what? Uh, is W star a constant function? So, uh, the W equation uh, has uh, uh, three constant uh, steady state. And if and, uh, uh, every type 1 solution uh, uh, converts to plus minus uh, k, because uh, Giga and Kong already proved that even including the critical case, even without a, a radial symmetry, the only uh, uh, bounded steady state uh, 
uh, these uh, 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 solutions. And if it converts to this, definitely H1 dot, H1 dot norm is infinite, and there is no way to, that you can compose it into a finite sum of uh, 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 solitons, because each soliton has finite energy. And therefore, this is excluded. Uh, this should be excluded to have our res uh, resolution result. And, but this is the only assumption. And, uh, and if it is not k, automatically it goes to zero and there is a high concentration like this. All the solitons are concentrated. If there are more than one, everything is concentrated. In, it is in y variable. Y variable, even if you look at it in a in a uh, zoomed cell similar coordinate, it will be highly concentrated, every soliton near the blow-up point. And there is no, you can also show that there is no soliton between the y variable and the x variable. In between, there is no possibility. Everything will be concentrated faster than the cell similar scale. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, do you know what are the stable regimes for this equation? What are the stable solutions? Stable, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, type 2 solution uh, lies uh, on a threshold in some sense. And usually if you perturb uh, it a little bit, then uh, it will blow, blow up in a type 1, type 1 regime. And type 1 regime is usually stable. So it is on the threshold. But of course, to understand the threshold uh, phenomena is also very important, even though it is not uh, stable under arbitrary perturbations. So what we are looking at is, uh, in some sense, a very delicate phenomenon. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, either the solution will either go to zero and the energy go, uh, just decays, or it will blow up to infinity. And is this rigorous, what you just said? Oh, is uh, to some extent, it is rigorous, to some extent, and a similar uh, threshold uh, phenomena has been studied by many other people, and in some sense it is rigorous, uh, uh, I would say that, uh, maybe not 100%, but in under some, okay, 100%, okay, he says 100, <laughs> maybe I thought that 99%, but he, he says 100% rigorous, okay. <laughs> So, sort of related to this question, so if you take all the data that leads to all this uh, infinite time bubble decomposition, so do you have any idea about this set being open, closed, uh, or like how large is this set? And the same question asked about if you have the finite time blow up and uh, all the data that leads to this bubble decomposition, how large is this set? Okay. So, as I said, it's uh, quite related, as a matter of fact, and uh, in some sense I already answered, but maybe a little bit uh, uh, vaguely. So, uh, this, is, uh, 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 this is going to zero, global, solu uh, global solution, but the energy goes to zero. And this is a type 1 blow up in some sense, you know. And, uh, global solution and even type 2 blow up solutions lies on this uh, threshold. And so we are looking at the boundary of between two regimes. And uh, type 1 blow up is stable and the convergence to zero energy or lost is also stable. Once you are very close to zero, then small perturbation cannot uh, uh, help you to go out. So both are stable, so it's on the, on the, on the peripheral. Okay. Um, other question or comment? Uh, yes, uh, in fact, here. Oh, here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, one comment uh, I would say. Okay, go uh, ahead. Uh, you say uh, a lot of analogy between the wave and the mm -hmm. event, but of course there are differences. Mm -hmm. First, uh, there is no scattering, so the yes, yes. The, the it's a dissipation. This is by dissipation. dissipation yeah. goes yes, yes. But there is a big uh, of a difference mm -hmm. that we prove that the uh, uh, okay. So we prove that the bubble have to be alternate, and for the wave, it seems that they have to be the same size. Oh, I see. So oh, this is a big, is a big difference. difference. Okay, <laughs> I forgot to mention clearly uh, uh, when I showed the uh, the theorem. 
Yes, the yes. bubble, neighboring bubbles, uh, adjacent bubbles have opposite sign in the heat equation, but in the wave equation they have the same sign, so it's a so the difference. The which are constructed uh, yeah, yeah. have the same sign, and yeah, yeah. if you, uh, okay, so mm -hmm. like Okay, so this is a big difference, yes. Okay, uh, well, okay. Uh, let's thank our speaker. Uh, I think that's, uh, <coughs>